I've really only been walking for, I don't know, maybe five, 10 minutes, and already I see a subject that I really want to try to capture. There's uh, some really cool ice formations all over the ground, uh, almost like a frost came through here and it just kind of kept building on it, creating these lice, like ice crystals that look like they're growing from the ground. But uh, in any way, there's a, there's a little plant that looks like it's just a little piece of sagebrush trying to peek through. Uh, and I find it really interesting and, and kind of cool. And I, I want to do kind of an abstract semi-macro because I don't have a macro lens of this plant trying to peek through the ice. All right, I opened it up a little bit, 1 50th of a second so that I could do an F16 shutter speed. Uh, hopefully that helps with the uh, depth of field. I know I'm zoomed into 200 on this lens, so um, I don't want anything out of focus, uh, but I guess if it is, ain't the end of the world. Uh, hopefully it turns out pretty cool. It's definitely more abstract than what I've been taking. This is one of those like fighting against the light situations where there's only so much you can do and filming while trying to do something like this generally takes a back seat. If I was on the other hillside up there, this would be a much better shot. Picked the wrong hill. Not even sure if I know how to get to that hill. I'm getting a whole lot of this like hillside right here in my shot that I don't want. All right. Panoramic, done. Use the lens cap, so it signifies this is the end of the panoramic. And uh, yeah, we can move on. Welcome back to the channel. I'm out here taking some pictures in the foothills. You can kind of see we got some uh, fresh frosty snow and we've got some, uh, some really kind of heavy inversion in the hills uh, out past here. Uh, and I was hoping to get some really cool shots of it from this perch right here. So I'm gonna set up my tripod. Uh, there's some really nice cloud formations back here behind me. This, this one hillside has some really cool snow formation creating kind of stripes. Tiger stripes. Uh, so I'm gonna get a shot of that and go from there. So I've been shooting a lot of film photography lately. I really enjoy the process of film uh, over the digital stuff since I shoot digital cameras for work almost all the time, uh, pretty much every day. So having a break from that is really nice. But uh, yeah, I, I'm just kind of scouting I don't want to, you know, use rolls of film when I don't have to. I've got, I got some nice digital equipment as well. So I'd rather save my film once I find a cool composition or uh, find a cool subject that I want to come back to. I call this a scouting mission. That's what we'll do. I'm gonna put on a teleconverter. This is a 1.4 time teleconverter. And here's my Fuji GFX 50S2. I think the lighting is cool enough that I'm gonna go for another panoramic. So whenever you shoot panoramics, two things are important. Make sure your tripod is in full manual 
and make sure everything is nicely level so as you're rotating the camera, uh, it's not causing any uh, weird wavy patterns. I overlap a lot to try to prevent as l much like lens distortion as possible. So it stitches together nicely. I'm zoomed in all the way. So 200 on the GF system plus the 1.4 times teleconverter. I think it works out to be about like a 2, 220 in a full frame format. Almost at the end. There's this hillside that I try to end with. One trick to use is to cover the lens hand or lens cap just to signify that this is that that was the last frame. And uh, this is how it turned out. Well, I'm not seeing much else up here. Um, it's just kind of how things go sometimes. I'll be honest, I had a slight, you know, preconceived notion of what the photography would look like up here. So like I said earlier, we've been dealing with cloud inversions. So I was kind of expecting to have a little bit of that up in these hills to photograph, you know, real moody and, uh, artistic, you know, more of a, um, instead of landscape photography, more like fine art photography. But as you can see, there's no cloud inversion here. Uh, it all kind of traveled uphill, which is fine. You know, cleaner air. That's nice. Good for, good for the air. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's fine. I have to decide if I'm going to go back home, call it a day or, uh, keep hiking down a bit and see if I see something else. Um, my wife has been sick, so I don't want to be away from home for too long since we've got a toddler who is quite active. Yeah, we're going to go on just a little bit further just to see if there's something cool. Um, I have an experiment I have to try while I'm out here and I have the opportunity, so um, I'm going to just go a little further. I'll tell you about it in a second. Trails are a wee bit muddy. I'm gonna do my best to stay right on the edge. So I don't make big footprints. Okay, I found my subjects. There's a couple of bushes, sagebrush I should actually, uh, right underneath a big cloud bank with bluish sky above it. I'm gonna shoot vertically, pointed right at that. Nice compression with my 100 to 200. What I'm testing out here is a black and white photo. I wanted to get some filters some some uh, colored filters because in black and white photography colored filters can help kind of uh, for certain colors to go darker go lighter changes the contrast of those colors thing is the filter system I have is uh, not really meant for film it's more of a digital camera system so they weren't really thinking about adding colored filters in for film photography so being thrifty, I bought myself some colored gels, which are used for studio lights. They kind of help just switch around the white balance, uh, or they add interesting effects to the color uh, of the light. So I cut those out to fit into my filter system, and we're going to test and see if it even works. I've been curious about this for a while. If so, I just saved myself a bunch of money. Okay. Yeah, 67. Take this off. Try not to drop it in the snow. I don't think I'll need my polarizer. I'm not going to worry about it. See this? 
Very excited to try these out. You can see I have a range of colors. I've got yellow, amber, orange, blue, green, and red. We're gonna try the red. Actually, let's put the camera on and look at the two differences. I'll take two shots, both using the Fuji's um, built-in film simulation. So two shots, both with Fuji's film simulation. We're gonna be the judge of whether or not it made any difference whatsoever, or if it's all a load of baloney. This is the control, shooting it in raw. Now we're gonna switch over to a black and white, um, Black and white, I think it's the Acros, if I'm not mistaken. Film simulation. Two second timer, this is F5.6. Once you know, it's a good thing I put these in a bag because totally just it's on the ground. Okay. Let's try our red. See if that does any difference. I did have to slow down the shutter speed to get good exposure on this one, so that's a good sign. It tells me that uh, it does have an effect. Very interesting. It did darken the sky. Huh, seems to be working. Shall we try another color? Like amber? This one has less of an effect on it, which is interesting. You wanna try another one? You wanna try uh, just looking th through and seeing what, uh, what the green does? Whoa, that really darkens it up. It's like no detail in the sky using the green. Weird. I'm gonna try the blue one. So far, no effect on that one either. Huh. Colored gels, people. You don't have to go out and buy the most expensive things. Sometimes you can just make it work with uh, what you can get on B&H for 25 bucks. So when it comes right down to it, I probably saved well over $1,500 by doing this, and let me explain why. Uh, first of all, I would have had to buy a different filter system. This is the Polar Pro system. Uh, it has everything I need when it comes to just standard photography, but it didn't really have anything for black and white, specifically film. So I would have had to invest in something like the case system or the leaf filter system. It means investing in an entirely different system, it means new, uh, new frames, new adapters, uh, and the filters themselves, which are actually hard to come by. So I've saved so much money by just doing this, which like I said, cost me $25 on B&H. I just cut them out to size using the filters I already have as templates. So uh, if you're looking for a filter system, there you go. You can use gels. Sweet. All right, well, that's it for me. Uh, we're going to call it a day. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, I feel accomplished, even though I didn't get my moody, foggy, in the middle of the hills photo that I was envisioning in my head. I did get to test out my filter hypothesis, 
and I also got to make a couple panoramic images, which I always enjoy. Uh, I, yeah. And even better than that, I got to spend some time out in nature, just, uh, yeah, just getting to hike around. So looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunset, but I'm not going to take any pictures of it. I'm going to go home, get some food, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. <music>I have one question for you. Maybe you can answer this in the comments down below. Do you like it when I put music in my videos? My past couple videos, I haven't done any, any music whatsoever. I've just focused in on the sounds of nature and me babbling to myself. Uh, but once before that, I've often added music, especially when I'm showing the photos. Uh, if you like that, let me know in the comments. If not, if it's distracting, let me, that, uh, let me know that too, because I don't, I don't mind having a source music. Um, if I don't have to, saves me some time. But, as a musician, I also enjoy finding the music for the photos, so... Either way, I'd be happy. Just let me know. Mm -hmm.